Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, do I have a guest for you, so fitting for 9-11. You know, I prayed on this and God provided. it. It was amazing. I was in um, the Grow Live Academy with Ken Walls and there was a new face in the crowd that I did not know, Malaysia H. Harold. And guess what? She met Ken Walls because they were on um, the memorial for Rob Cornelius, who I met at Jeffrey Gittimore's at a mastermind, mm, I'm not sure, four, three or four years ago. A tragic loss for the mindset wizard, but a tragic loss on 9-11. So we're going to reach out and thank all the service providers, everyone who lost somebody, and be grateful, grateful for growing up, standing strong, being part of this great America. America with so many wonderful people like Malaysia H. Harold. She's now a spiritual transformer, coach, veteran, speaker, and author who helps women find freedom and fulfillment. But really, she's much, much more. And wait till you hear about the links that we have, and she didn't even know about it. Air Force, for one. That's just a clue. She's a healer, an unleasher, a light that leads women back to their true selves so they can fully and finally find themselves and be what they're supposed to be and follow the adventure or the path that God gave them. As a licensed psychotherapist and a board certified clinical social worker, Malaysia blends clinical expertise, spiritual wisdom, and intuitive guidance to help women, and I believe men too in the past, she has helped a lot of men and children overcome their past traumas, heal the hurts, and define the vision for their lives. We always need to keep working on this. We keep getting better every day, right? Her incomparable coaching guides clients on an intimate and insightful journey to break free from limiting beliefs and expectations and discover lives of authenticity, purpose, and bliss. Extraordinary walking woman through radical transformation, Malaysia is more than just her client's coach. She's their champion. And I have a whole lot more to say about her, but I'm just going to bring her on because I cannot wait another moment. <laughs> and welcome Malaysia to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you I for having me. Air Force pin on to celebrate you for 9-11 and all that you've done. And you're not going to believe this, but I'm also from an Air Force family. My dad was Air Force. Yes. And my little sister just um, retired after 27 and a half years as a full bird colonel. Thank and, you for her service. <laughs> and, uh, yes. And I was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe this. And I was wondering if your paths had ever crossed. She was also at Andrews Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I was like, woo, woo, woo. And another, yes. sister, oh my goodness, it's amazing. So 9-11, um, I used to go to Twin Towers all the time. <sighs> today, today is, and, and I'm, thank you for acknowledging, you know, this and um, such a tragic loss in 2001. Um and, you know, as we explore more, you'll see why I went into the military and how that all came. But it was basically today in 2001 when I made the decision that I was going in. Um, but I, I just want to, my heart goes out to, you know, the families, the fallen and those who continue to serve our country, protect us, whether you know, it be uh, military members, mil members of the community, our first responders, everybody who chips, chips in to make sure that we're able to sleep under the very blanket of freedom that this country provides. Um, I, I, my heart just, whew, th and this is my first 9-11 outside of uniform too. So ooh, it's, it's a special day. It's a special day. Yeah, I was I was actually in DC on on Monday and I got a calling to go to Arlington National Cemetery. I have a mother, a stepmother, and my dad all buried there. Wow. And I went to visit and I was like, wow, isn't it interesting how you came into my life and you're here and we are so connected. 
on 9-11. I couldn't have a more perfect guest. <laughs> it's alignment. It's alignment, Cynthia. <laughs> it is. I've been waking up so joyful for these past, I don't know, this whole year. It's just, yeah, I'm so blessed. Thank you. I'm so grateful. So you have had such a unique journey. Yes. What inspired you to make the switch into becoming a spiritual transformation coach? Well, um, at, you know, like we were talking about, um, I've served uh, 20 years at eight months um, on active duty and, um, you know, providing uh, psychotherapy and doing a lot of other amazing things that I've had the opportunity to do. And I had my own brush with a near death experience in 2020 that basically, you know, changed my world around again. Um, and it was at that time that I knew, you know, once I was able to kind of get through, you know, that storm that, you know, a lot of times when we have these experiences, we say, what am I supposed to learn? Where, where am I going with all of this? And that's basically what I did. And, you know, healing is such a spiritual journey. Uh, facing death is a spiritual journey. And when you realize that in order to truly heal, that you have to really go deep inside and not just, you know, it's not just talk therapy either. There's there's a much deeper uh, purpose. There is a deeper calling and inner knowing that we need to, to figure out. And so it's a journey. And once I realized that, I said, oh, I used a lot of these healing mechanisms to heal myself. I was on um, oral chemo. I had gotten up to 254 pounds and um, the medication was, was killing me, essentially. And so I used holistic wellness, uh, spirituality and, you know, calling on God, of course, and um, yeah, you see a much different person than was represented in my, in my 2021. Well, we're so lucky to have well, you. 2020 it's rather. <laughs> yeah. You were Walter Reed and my mother actually died at Walter Reed. I spent a lot of time there and I'm so glad that you that. became a, an ag, um, you took charge of your own care. But yeah. for a moment, I have this beautiful picture of you up when you were still in the service, can you tell a story? Is this is this at a funeral? Are you passing the flag to someone? Or are you receiving an award? Or it's so interesting that you said that. <laughs> so I felt it was a funeral. That's exactly how I felt. That was my retirement ceremony in April of this year. But I felt like it was a retirement. If it was a funeral, it was the ending of an era. Um, in my life, I have been in uniform since high school. You know, I was in junior ROTC. I did ROTC in college. Um, but it wasn't until 9-11 in 2001 that I decided, OK, I'm going to go into military. And so having to abruptly transform, transition, it, it was not easy. It has not been an easy road. And so that day I plan, you know, we had this elaborate, so beautiful ceremony and the people that came all from all over for honoring me from all the different services, you know, that I was either in or served with in the different hospitals all over the world. Um, it, it was just, I needed that. I needed the love, the support of all those people there to help me say, you know what, it's going to be all right. You could still, but one of the things, Cynthia, is I didn't realize I could still serve. You know what I mean? Cause I'm like, I don't have a uniform. So I thought my life was over because I was like, I was born for a life of service. And so guess what? You can still serve. Look, my uniform look a little different now. You know, I look a little cuter now. Fabulous, <laughs> darling. <laughs> Yeah. Happy and healthy. Yes. You've overcome so many personal challenges, including childhood trauma. I couldn't believe an illness. How did yeah. those experiences shape your approach now to life and coaching and this new you, this new Ooh. reborn? Yeah. And, and it's funny that you use that term because rebirth 
is something that's really, it feels like a, a rebirth, you know, birth is not easy, you know, bringing know. children <laughs> into this world. And so um, I would say that it shaped me in a way, and I think I've mentioned this several times in the past, but what I was what I was asking God was, okay, what did I need to learn out of all? Because all of this pain is just not for me. And the biggest light bulb that went off for me was the art of surrender. And I actually got that tattooed on my arm. I don't know if you can see it. Because I had to remind, well, it's little, but I had to remind myself. So when you surrender wholeheartedly, and I'm not saying like, oh, I've made it and I've arrived because every day it's like, okay, somebody say one more thing. <laughs> but what I mean is that when you allow the flow, life to flow, when you allow life to unfold and not try to control every detail, in the military, you have to control things, right? You, you're you set from the day you come in. Here's the rules. Here's the instructions. Here's the, you know, the, the rules of engagement, you know? And so everything was very, very structured. And you knew, okay, from this rank to this rank, this is what I needed to do. These are the places I needed to serve or type of positions I needed to have. When you give that all up and it's like, wow, I don't, I don't know what my next assignment is. Hmm. Hmm. Actually, what happens when you do that, you meet people that you would have never met before. Mm -hmm. Two weeks after I retired, I was in a room meeting with Howard Schultz, the Ooh. founder of Starbucks. Yeah. Now I'm meeting with Cynthia Mannion. Right. No, I'm just saying like the people For who real. I'm meeting now who we're, we're aligning with different people now, right? Outside of our comfort zone, the world just opens. You know, you, you may not know exactly what's in that door, but the light is on. And when you walk through it, Cynthia, you're going to, the world, you're going to experience things that you never thought you would experience. It's almost like a uh, Christmas every day. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard. It's challenging because it's like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know this. But then people start coming in your life. Yes. Oh, I don't know this system, that system, this CRM. Then you got people coming in your life saying, oh, I know how to do that. Mm -hmm. I got you on that. Oh, your book's coming out. Oh, I know how to plan events. I know how to, I know how to edit it for you. The world just, the floodgates just open. It's like magic every day. <laughs> Isn't it fun? You just wake it's up fun. so excited, like it's Christmas morning, and you have to open the new present. You're like, woo -hoo. It is. It is. Every day is a gift. Every day is a true yeah. gift. And that's why they call it a present. Yes. And being in the present. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, we've got Susie on. Hi, Susie. Hi, Eric. God's blessings to us both and to you too. Can you share a moment from your life when you realized that you had the power to manifest your own reality? Ooh, I, so since childhood, I would say I had these big lofty visions. I was a huge visionary, even from childhood, but I'm trying to think um, I don't know when I actually real, I just knew that even though I faced a lot of adversity, there were always these, I call them tiny miracles, right? I have that show, the tiny miracles show every Thursday. At 7 no tiny miracles. They're all amazing. They're, I think they're they're like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, you know, so you could call it manifestate, but there were always these angels that were there during my, even during childhood, um, people who singled me out, who lifted me higher, put me in all these talented, gifted programs, hired me at these jobs. It was, there was always someone there. So even when it seemed dark, it's like on one side, 
on the other side, there was someone, I remember I had a teacher, I was in middle school at the time, and I had a teacher who would come and pick me up from my mother's house and bring me to the to um, go roller skating. Oh, but she brought me by myself. She never picked up my sister. She didn't pick up. It was just me. And I was like, why is she? Hmm. It was so weird. It was it, like, why is she single and me? Why is she picking me up? But there was always someone in, in, in a situation or getting picked up for this, like I said, talented gift programs at college when I'm in middle school. Like it was always, I can't even explain. So I knew that although I faced what I faced, it's like when I use when I use my visions, my dreams, and the things that I thought about, like there will always be some sort of halo or some sort of light or some sort of person that would come in and let me know, like, okay, girl, you got this, you know. <laughs> and your halo actually is behind you right now. Your circle is yeah. Halo. Yes. Oh, I got to tell you about the halo. Please. So this is um, my women's community. Dream, it's life. Dream life manifested. Uh -huh. And the reason why it's so important, the reason why I'm here with you today, one of the reasons through our connections, uh, Robbie Cornelius and mm -hmm. I sat down and literally came up with the concept for my women's group. We came up with the name together. And so I have to acknowledge that. I feel like his, you know, that angel, like he, yeah. his spirit is still here and alive because he encouraged us to use our voice to inspire the lives of others. So he was always telling his story and how he came from adversity. And I was scared to tell my story. I was embarrassed. I was, you know, I'm this person, you know, same thing like your sister. I'm a 06. Like we don't talk about that kind of stuff. We're, nope. we're you leading be, people. You gotta be strong. You gotta have that you gotta shell. Be you, gotta, you gotta be powerful and no emotion and can take care of anything, anytime, anywhere. No problem. I got this. And we can, however, how many more lives are we saving or, or even touching by being authentic and saying, you know what? I don't have it all together. I thought my life was up here and I thought I did all these things. I have all the accolades, all the awards. Look, you see that picture. Yep. It's beautiful. And Patricia but, is acknowledging as Patricia Gage is saying, beautiful energy. You both look amazing. Oh, and thank you, Patricia. <laughs> you know Patricia yet? No, I don't think you I will. Met She's a powerful out. woman. Oh my goodness. She's an artist. She's amazing. She Ooh. can do anything. She's a public speaker. She's a photographer. And she needs to be in our circle when we do our own thing. Yes, we do. Absolutely, up. Patricia. Coming okay. up in 2025, aren't we? The Absolutely. Woman. But I didn't mean to. Uh, I just got so excited when I saw her. No, I love it. I love this. And I she love recently this. went through a big loss. And you've gone through so many losses. She just lost her daughter. And you oh. lost your brother and so, so many things. Um, yeah. So your coaching combines clinical expertise and spiritual wisdom. How do you blend those two approaches in your work? And how do you handle the loss of your brother from domestic violence, which is something that you experienced, my dear? Yeah. Yeah. I, it was so much. There was a lot of trauma, um, you know, like I said, throughout my life and my brother, um, you know, he was, he was, his life was taken when I was at Hickam, when I was How stationed at Hickam. Hickam. How old was he? He was, he was 26 at the time. Oof. And Oof. so I was at, I was at Hickam Air Force Base. It was Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And honestly, when you ask me that question, I can't say like I've grieved anything yet. Like now I'm grieving the loss of, you know, my identity, my health at the, you know, it's, it's a phase. And so there were so many trauma. I can't say that I've actually even touched that because it was something is unfathomable, you know, and then you start to have survivor's guilt and you say like, what could I have done or, you know, to, to prevent that or, um, but as far as, you know, blending. So what I would say is, 
you know, when you're dealing with several different things, traumas, challenges in your life, take it piece by piece. Just deal with today. Deal with this moment right here because it's it's unfathomable to think about all those different things, right? I just put them away nicely in the closet. One of the big things with form, you know, combining clinical expertise and holistic health and spirituality, they're all really intertwined together, right? You at, at your body is not separate from your spirit and it's all combined. And so what I do is, you know, really when you're looking at Western medicine or the Western modality for healing or for treatment, um, using complementary and alternative medicine, holistic medicine, that's the real medicine because a lot of us didn't have health care, you know, or our, our family members, our ancestors, they didn't have, you know, treatment the way we see it now. And so what did they do? They had the homemade soup. They had the rub down that salve. I don't know what was in that salve, but they would have this homemade salve that they would put on your chest. They would rub all over you. They would use the hot towels. They, I mean, there were prayer, right? Meditation, prayer circles, prayer calls. You know, I mean, there, there were so many different things, breathing exercises. I mean, there were so many different things and, and herbs that people use. I mean, we tribal people have been, we, this is nothing new. So you're just bringing us back to ourselves, really. And so when you go back to the spiritual, to the humanistic and spirituality self, and when you actually acknowledge it, because sometimes we don't, it's too hard, it's too challenging sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so to think about feeling or experiencing emotion. And so guess what? You just go back to, to being who we truly are who we were before we were even born. When you combine that whole thing together, you will see things in a different light because things will come before you even know you need them. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, sometimes you're looking around, Oh, how am I going to do this? How am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to stuff start coming before you can even think about it? How is that? It's our divine light, our divine. divine. Mm Mm-hmm. It's easy. It's easy. Just be. Take your. Get off the internet. Take yourself. Take a breath. You know, put on some some the earth, nature sounds. Go outside. That's when you're the closest to God, because God made everything, all the nature. So yeah, it, it's it's taking things away is what and we being do grateful when we're yeah. grateful for what you have. Mm-hmm. 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 So you're the oldest of, um, you have two sisters. So you're the oldest of three and yes. I'm the oldest of four. Okay. And I also lost my brother in 2020. Oh. I mean, it, like I told you, it's amazing. It's just amazing. So many things. It is amazing. We're going to have a mm. lot of conversations. But yes, we are. <laughs> is the biggest barrier holding women back from living their authentic lives. You said it something is. about authentic lives and your your persona as an officer of the United States Air Force and your authentic self that now you have an opportunity to not only explore for yourself, but to share with the world. Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And in my time in both, well, because I, I retired, they probably see in a Navy uniform there um, in the United States Public Health Service. So I did my, the beginning of my career in the Air Force, and then I transferred. So, you know, had a chance to work um, for the Surgeon General of the United States, working on Capitol Hill, traveling the world. It, it was the most um, blessed experience that I can say that I had. And um, again, it was all because of 9-11 that I ended up having these experiences in the first place. And, and of course, maybe junior ROTC in high school. But um, life has been a blessing no matter what we face. And you have faced (laughs) some big ones. I don't know if you want to tell that story, if you want to just keep on moving. For which which one? Look, which one? I don't know. (laughs) You're talking about when I, when I was at deployment, when I came back and what happened? Yeah. You know what? Why don't you tell that story? Because you know what, ladies and gentlemen, you think you had a little uh, hiccup in your life. She's got us a new level of gratefulness for me. 
Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Um, and I do, I share the story not to, you know, um, to blame anyone or to spread any negative information. What I'm saying is he, we all will go so, through some things, but how you get through that, how you navigate those challenges and, and getting to the other side is what's really, really important. And but taking I care was, of yourself. Taking and care taking of care of yourself, um, prioritizing yourself. Many, especially women, we prioritize everybody else. And, you know, we, we don't think about ourselves. And so, you know, I was really at the, I would say the height of my career, you know, I had gotten promoted, you know, to Captain Navy rank and um, equivalent to a colonel. I, I'm giving you all the, the, um, the checklist. Cliff notes. Okay. Of what we think we want. And so, um, got married, we bought a house. I had my dream car, all the things, you know, I'm, I'm doing well, I'm, I'm killing it. I have teams where we're traveling the world. Like life is good. And I remember cause my grandmother passed. She is the one who raised me when I ended up moving with my grandmother. And I remember in 2019, when I got promoted, I was like, I felt empty. It was like, wait a minute. I, I did. I, I sacrificed my whole life for this and this is what I wanted. And this is what I got. And now I have everything I asked for pretty much. Right. Why do I feel empty? What's going on with this? So 2020 comes. What happened in our country in 2020? Okay. Everything shuts down. I get deployed to the most desolate area in the Navajo Nation. They sent me there by myself as the lone behavioral health provider for two medical centers. Now, if you've never been on a, a reservation before that's desolate like that, there's nothing. There's no resources. They didn't have prophylactics. They didn't have immunization, nothing. Okay. So again, I've been in situations. So they're like, oh, I'm, they must have sent me because I can handle this, right? I've handled so many other things in the, in the world. So I get there. Um, it was very challenging. I will tell you, I think I started to have a spiritual awakening while I was there because I felt the darkness. It, you know, I'm, we're not we won't get into everything that happened, but there was a shift. Let me just say that there was a huge shift. I think um, Wayne um, Dyer used to talk about that, you know, the shift and he has the movie, the shift. That's a really good one. But that's when it's I think it kind of started Maybe when my grandmother passed. But really at that reservation. So I started to question myself, like people are living like a third world country and I'm being sent here from DC and I'm coming to do what? You know what I mean? Like, what am I going to do for that? You know? So it was the dark night of the soul, Patricia. Yeah. That's exactly what, this is what I'm talking about. See, now I, I, I'm in environments where I can talk like this, right? I may not have been in environments before where people will understand what, what I was talking about, but exactly that. And it, it that's, that's, that's not a dark night. That's a dark season. Okay. <laughs> so I will tell you that, hmm. but dark night of the soul, that's when, you know, like I said, that shift started. So um, anyways, I come home, I, I was, you know, feeling very agitated. I was having anxiety. I didn't understand what's going on. And I had had a history of, you know, bodybuilding, doing races. And so when I came home, because that's what you do, right? Military, you stressed out, go work out. What are we doing? So I'm working out, I'm doing my Peloton bike. And one night I get up and I'm like, I got to go to the bathroom. And guess what, Cynthia? You're not going to believe it. I couldn't walk. I couldn't walk. What you mean? So again, I didn't wake my husband up. Let me crawl to the bathroom. I mean, you're in so much pain that you can't walk and you're not going to wake up your, your significant other. You're going to crawl yourself to the bathroom. Ask, ask for help. What? I'm not. I wasn't used to that. I wasn't. Right. Military. And so I, I'm in the bathroom. I can't get up. I'm crying on the floor. 
So my husband hears me. He comes in there. He picks me up. What's going on? I'm like, I can't walk. I'm in so much pain. So anyway, long story short, several days, I was still in pain, trying to medicate myself, you know, doing heat, doing ice, all the things. Cause I did like a marathon before too. I did a lot of races and you, you feel pain. You know what pain is where you no longer feel, feel your limbs and you, why, why you see people going to the bathroom on themselves. That's real. That's real. And so, um, so anyways, I ended up getting hospitalized at Walter Reed Medical Center. And I do want to thank the people who helped save my life. But when I got there, again, I'm someone, again, we appear like this. No one's going to ever think anything's wrong. And so I'm I'm getting the highest level of pain meds. They're giving me injections, you know, intravenously. And so the fourth day they come in and they say, Captain Harrell, we can't find anything. We're sending you home today. What do you mean you're sending me home today? I said the pain was the pain didn't even subside with the high level meds. Imagine just being a little bit sedated with extreme pain. Like I knew that I was transitioning. And so I was thinking about like making amends with people. I was sending texts. I was texting my friend that was in Afghanistan. I was thinking about my life and all the things that I didn't get to do. And it's fun. It's funny the things I didn't get to do. And I'm like, do trying to do them now. But um, so I was like, well, you'll have to euthanize me. I was like, cause you wouldn't be able to deal with this pain. So anyway, I had to advocate. I felt like I couldn't really be a patient at that time because they said, oh, you just came home from deployment. We're going to send in the psychiatrist. Now I'm a mental health provider. Now I said, look, if this is a somatic symptom, we need to figure this out. There's no, I mean, there's no level of somatization that you're going to feel that kind of pain where you know your, your, your spirit is leaving, you're transitioning. Hmm. So, um, so they didn't euthanize me. Thank Yay, goodness. I'm here. Um, so they, they ended up taking a sample out of my hip. Oh, that um, hurts. They, they, it, no they, they, for that. Yeah. The fluoroscopy, they put this huge needle like this huh. all the way in your hip. And so Cynthia, guess what? When they got the sample and they analyzed it. Uh-huh. They couldn't believe it. Everybody's running in the room. Mm-hmm. My husband's scared. He's, he's nervous. I'd never really see him get emotional like that. She got to go to surgery, running in there. I had a septic hip. Mm. They gonna send me home with a septic hip? You'd be dead in two days. I would. I would have been dead in days. Yes, I would have been dead in days. Even if so, that's why I had to be so strategic. I had to talk to them like I was a provider for. I was a provider, but I had to be so professional. I couldn't be a patient because I thought they would have sent me into the psych you know, portion and I would have died because they didn't find it. Right. <laughs> so anyway, that started this whole journey because you feel hurt. You feel abandoned. You've helped to take care of so many patients. And when you needed help, they basically didn't believe you. Mm-hmm. To, to send in the site. Now I understand I'm a mental health provider But when you're saying I can't find anything, I'm just going to bring in the psychiatrist. You're saying that I'm crazy. That's what I'm. I'm imagining all of this. No, you aren't. So I'm just saying when you're working with patients, believe them. Believe them. Now, there is a way that you can work backwards. Look, go watch all the shows. Remember that? What is it? House house when he was going, you know, and doing all of now and back mapping and all this stuff. But believe them because we're still having 22. That's the numbers low. I believe it. But 22 suicides a day for veterans. Why? Yeah, we should have them on pedestals. I'm telling you why. Mm. So I just pray that my experience in my life can shed light to other people. Because after that, 
my life changed forever. I had nine surgeries over the past four years. I had to take oral chemo. I had a life threatening, I still had a life threatening condition and uh, many multiple specialists in and out of the hospital. And so you're like, my life was so good at that time. And now it has gone to here. Like my, I'm good. That life was good. I'm good. I don't need all this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Oh, yes. We're not know. doing this. So here's the deal. You can say that I'm not going to deal with this. And you can make a decision and say, I'm going to do something about it and not rely. Now, I'm not saying to not work with your physicians and your medical team. But what I'm saying is God is going to give you the information that you need to be successful. Everybody, there's not one step size fits all. Now, when in the beginning, when you have when you're dying, you need meds. But over a 10, four year span of all those, what does it do to your body? So let's figure out what resources we have to take responsibility and to meet the medical team halfway. Is it just their responsibility to heal me? No. Mm -mm. And it's just really to treat the symptoms anyway. And you know, you have to listen to that voice as they say, deep down, you know, deep down that voice. Intuitive nudge. <laughs> Oh. Yes. Uh, we've got lots of people here saying hi to you. Um, Lynn. Hello. Hi, Lynn. Oh, um, sacral int intuition. Hey, Lynn. I love you too. Now, Lynn has been with us the whole time. I, I met Lynn because of Robbie too. Like, we're sisters. Of course, you did. Of course, we're you sisters. Did. We've talked. Oh, man. She oh, says, such Oh, my goodness. Song. Oh, my goodness, ladies. Woohoo. And and Eric too. <laughs> and he said, said sacred. Here, Eric is right. He said abandoned. Yeah, I felt uh, Eric oh, so a lot of words. Uh, the, a lot this, of words to describe insane. adjectives to describe the feelings that I felt. And and I'm not gonna say like, oh, you just get over it. Um, it's a journey. It's a journey. Um, but sacral intuition, listen and believe yourself. Yes. Even if you can't see it, if something is telling you that you're dying, you know, you're not like, I don't care what you say. I already knew I was, I was singing hymnals in my head, you know, and I'm like, Oh, I'm going to see my Nana. Like I was, I was ready because they're, they're telling me nothing's wrong with you. And I already knew. So I'm like, look, I'm sending my messages to people. You know, I don't think I really express to people, oh, I think I'm going. I'm out, I think I'm out of here. But it was almost you were fighting for your life, but at the same time, there was this calm that you knew that you were gonna be okay either way. Mm -hmm. Right? A healthy place. And so that's what it is. So can you walk us through the process that you're using of helping other women heal from these past traumas? Yes. Hopefully so, not as bad as this one. And hopefully <laughs> they're here to hear you. Yes. <laughs> hear this out, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> so I have, so I have a company called Blissful Life Consulting and we offer holistic wellness services to individuals, groups, and corporations or institutions and I also do the coaching side of the house. And most of my coaching is towards um, women. And most of the women who I work with, I don't think a lot of women come to you and say, I need to heal my traumas. Cynthia, can you help me heal my traumas? No I one's never, saying ever. it. Never. I don't know I them anyway. <laughs> so guess what we do? What, what's fun? Um, let's live our dream life. Yeah. So Absolutely. in order to manifest your dream life, what do you have to do? Heal. Manifestation is healing, period. All the blockages, all the traumas, all that stuff. So we do we do a lot of manifestation, um, you know, kind of modalities, but it's also through the process of healing yourself. 
So for instance, we have a retreat coming up October 11th through 13th in Santa Monica, California. We're going to the Reality Center. So I went there. Again, all the modalities that I use, there each person gets a comprehensive plan for them. That's number one, even if you're in one of the group coaching programs. But for this one, what I love to do is go and try different, you know, healing modalities, techniques. And so you've heard of plant medicine, right? right. And all the resources and data behind it. And so I found, I didn't find my coach uh, referred me, but a center in Santa Monica, California that uses multi-sensory wellness experience to simulate the psychedelic experience. Hmm. So guess what? If you're in fight or flight, which most of us are, if you're watching TV, watching a presidential debate, whatever is going on in our country right now, it's always something. You're at fight or flight. Your body is never in homeostasis. And so when that happens, you can't hear from the divine. I think Patricia was talking about that earlier, being able to hear, you know, when you have discernment, being able to get those messages, you can't get them when you're up here, when you're nervous, when you're all over the place, when you're not being present, when you're not practicing mindfulness. And so that is something that will help you to do it like that, like this in one second, like seriously. And so when you're in that state and you ask specific questions of God, the divine, and you say, listen, what is, what is my purpose? What is, whatever your question is, and you're going to get some answers. Now, here's the thing about asking questions. Do we always like the answers that we get? <laughs> Not necessarily. But you need to hear it. <laughs> There's a reason. When you're in that relationship you knew you wasn't supposed to be in. You're in that job you weren't. God told you to move 10 years ago. You know what I mean? Like, it's all this stuff, right? You know there's stuff that you need. You you know when you're not where you're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And you can go you're gonna, fix it. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You're going to keep banging your head up you against the do wall. It. Why do I keep dating the same men? Why do I keep getting the same boss? I'm getting a new job and it's the same situation over and over again. Maybe it's you. Maybe it's us not listening, not being obedient and not being in a position to hear the messages. So when you start to clear the clutter and make room for the unfolding of everything, again, the doors open, that light comes on and you're like, Again, you're not, it, it's not easy because you're going to have to become someone else. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not, you're no longer going to be the person that you were and what happens then the relationships are going to change. Mm-hmm. Your stuff. environments are going to change, but for the good, ultimately, once you get through the, the, you know, the loss, the feelings of loss and all of that stuff that comes with that and grief, you're going to meet people. You're going to meet your tribe. You're going to have conversations and you're going to feel like, wow, I don't have to be a politician and I can say real things now. So we really I really just work with when I'm doing the coaching side of the house or even the holistic wellness or the retreats or the spa events, workshops. We basically provide custom tailored services that work for you. So even if you're doing therapy with someone, you're going to do an assessment, right? And we have to come to an agreement. So if you're working with me, you have to be on board. I can't just, oh, I'm going to tell you what you need. You, you're going to have to help me figure out how we can help you because there are some things that we're going to pull out of you and, and it's not going to be comfortable, but it's nice to have someone there to support you through that journey through, it might be some darkness and some roughage out there, but I'm telling you, when you get through that and you get to that other side, you get over that, get up from that Valley, you climb that mountain. Somebody's Ooh. giving you the shoes to help you. They're giving you water bottles, right? They're helping you, you know, navigate. Oh, don't there's snakes over there. Let's go over here. We're, we're, we're never, we're not meant to be alone. 
and the military says, leave no one behind. Right. And we don't, we don't, we're not. And so now I'm able to serve in a different capacity. And the view is much better from the mountain. It is. <laughs> it is. Hi, Tim. Nice to see you too. Hey, Tim. You mentioned that women need to trade their perception of perfection for true freedom. Mm. Can you explain what that looks like in practice? Ooh. That look, that's my second book. That's the second book. The next one that's coming out from the first one. So some people, including me, have built a life on needing validation. So for instance, if you did not feel like you got love or validation from just say your parents or whoever, you've been through trauma, you've been abandoned, you've had all these experiences. So you say, you know what? I got this. I'm a beast. You know, you put your Goggins hat on at that point, right? Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I'm going oh, yeah. to see David That's Goggins. Awesome. If you ever see this, I'm coming to see you in DC Goggins when you come here. Um, I listened to his books when I was down in darkness too, but um, oh, it's, it's, oof, I, you, I had to echo totally in one ear, but some days you need Goggins. So it's, it's a balance, but you, you put on this perception of perfection because it's like, okay, you told me I was ugly. You told me I was stupid. You told me I would never be anything. And now I'm going to show you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I got everything. I could do it all, you know? And so what happens, I told you when I, when I got promoted to the, most people never make that rank, very low percentage. Wait a Especially minute. What's next? I don't, this doesn't feel like anything like what's next. You're always looking for the next best thing to try to validate you or give you love. And it's a false sense of security because it's very short lived. It's very short lived. Now I got to do something else. Now I need a new car. Now I need a mansion. I need a jet. I need a bigger everything. Oh. When does it stop? I, I have a billion dollars now. I'm still sad. I, I look good. I got my makeup on. I got my jewelry. I still, I still need more. Now you're going to get all change your whole appearance and I still need more validation. And so what happens is we all know this, but when you are not happy inside, when you are not secure with being who you are, your true self, not mm -hmm. just the body, not just I'm saying your true essence, who you are, your spiritual being when that is not in alignment with you, with your body, with the world, how you experience the world, then you will wear a mask. Now, what could happen is you experience something that makes you take that mask off because guess what? You no longer in uniform. So my uniform mask is off. I guess I could still wear my uniform around. They might think something's wrong with me. No, oh, but look what's underneath. Look what has been born. Look at your light. You're shining. Thank look, thank you. That means so much. Cause it wasn't, it wasn't always this way. I have pictures, <laughs> you know, as my documentary at some point come out, you're going to see some pictures. And, um, I just, I didn't know day to day how I was going to make it, but I will tell you, once you do start to pay off, pull off the layers of that mask, pull back the layers of the onion of all this pain, all this hurt and just rediscover, you know, the shift, the unfolding, discover who you are and who, what your purpose is here. And once you realize that life, it really isn't about you and it's about what you bring right to the earth. What, what is your contribution to humanity? Mm hmm the game changes because you're like, oh, I'm sad today. I'm depressed today. Like today, 9-11, this is one of the saddest days. And that's why every year. And that's why I was like, you know what? You asked me to do. I was like, let me do it. But I could have said, because I did, I did cancel a couple things. 
I could say, you know what? I'm sad. I can't do it. But guess what? Someone is going to watch this. So if I don't show up and that one person that needed to hear this message does not hear it. Are you are you following your calling? Are, are you are you doing what your purpose is? There's no co again. This was last minute. There's no coincidence that I met you. There's no coincidence that you asked me to be here. So I see this as my new assignment from God. Mm -hmm. It's not about me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. And I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. And I was just like, wow. And all the pieces came together. And then when I was doing my research, I was like, and this, um, she was in Andrews and my sister was Andrews. We went to Andrews and she went to Walter Reed and my mom died at Walter Reed. And she's in the Air Force and my sister retired in July, 27 and a half years. And you just retired in May, 20 years. You were going 20 for years, 30, eight months, <laughs> 20 years, eight months. And you were going for 30 and life decided that you were supposed to be doing this or whatever this brings you to at a higher yeah. level to reach, yes. to reach Alex and Tim and Eric and, and Patricia and all the people that are jumping on and Lynn and all oh my and goodness. Lynn. And oh my goodness, and what advice would you give to someone who is just um, beginning this self-discovery and healing, besides going to Santa Monica? <laughs> <laughs> um, the Yes, yeah, Santa Monica, I'm telling you, that's that's going to be the retreat right there. That's going to be a game changer. And, and most of the women who do work with me end up changing their lives completely. I have one lady who she had a brick and mortar, she closed her store. When we got into her, her true why, you know, her true deep calling and get clarity on that, she's doing something completely. I mean, she still has some, some part of it, but she closed that down. I'm telling you. Um, so what advice would I give to someone who's just starting? I would say to just be because it's hard to feel the, it's very challenging to want to, to, to feel the pain, to sit in it and to sit in the pain. We want to do things to try to mask the pain, you know, whether it be uh, medication or alcohol or binging different things. Um, try to figure out being. And I did that by uh, meditation. I got very deep into meditation when I met the, because Clubhouse was really big um, at that time. And that's when I was going through this stuff. So I would literally be in the bed, listening to Clubhouse like this with all, with all those people who were in Clubhouse at the time. And that's how I met Robbie. Did you run into Glenn Moore shower in Clubhouse? Yeah. Oh yeah. It was, it was all of them. It was Kim yeah. Walls was in there. Glenn yeah. Moore shower. Yeah, we were all in there in their groups. And so I don't know how I ended. I think Rob, they brought Robbie up one time and then he was talking and then he was saying he had this thing. And so that and I ended up, you know, being able to be in a mastermind on calls, you know, I was sick, but I was able to listen in. I was able to talk. I was able to listen to other people who had been through similar experiences, who had been through traumas, who had overcome. And they were talking about meditation and they were talking about, you know, all these different things. And so that that was one thing was to, you know, pray, meditate and be around, try to manifest or align with people who can talk your language. Because when you're going through darkness, your family will not, your family and friends who know you now, a lot of them. Now, for people who have compassion and love you, they will have empathy, but they didn't know you in this capacity. And so they're going to freak out. They're going to be like, what is wrong with her? I've had people come and talk, come take care of me when I couldn't walk, when I couldn't do anything. Um, and, you know, I remember one of my cousins coming from Massachusetts and she cried. She was like, I never saw you like that. I was, I was not myself. And so it hurts you to think you're hurting them. And so it's nice when you have other people who understand what you're, what you're going through in the language that you're talking at that time that it's, it's something different because you are, you are, you are going through a metamorphosis. You are changing. 
you know, and so it's not going to look pretty in the cocoon. I'm telling Wait you, till the butterfly comes out. Yeah. And when and when they see you later, they're going to be like, oh, you know, but um, meditation. Um, one of the other books that I listen to and it is free on YouTube. Now, we, I buy, I end up buying the books because I want to give, you know, I'm an author and I want to give authors credit. But if you need something to, today, right this second, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle mm -hmm. and listen to the one that has his voice. Mm. It's mesmerizing. I literally used to sleep. I, I listened to it many times, but I would sleep with it with his voice. And it's so soothing. It, imagine being a baby, like being reborn and reading, having someone read to you. That's what it's like. And every time you listen to that book or you read it for yourself, depending on where you are in your life, you will get a new message. That's yes. for any book that you read. Yes. You know, I read Paulo Coelho. Um you know, a lot of different. And then, like I said, Goggins books, there were so many different things and I would listen to them because I couldn't see, you know, many days I'm taking meds. I'm in a daze. Um, I actually went into like a research, you know, modality for myself because I told God, like, I'm not living like this. I'm not, I'm not doing life like this. I'm, I'm not. So I got to, we got to figure this out. So I watched the movie Heal was introduced to Dr. Joe Dispenza in that movie, uh, Anthony William, the medical medium. So when you start to realize that when they talked about there were people who had cancer, uh, Dr. Anita, or um, yeah, Anita Majorni, I, I don't know if I'm saying her name right. She had a near death experience. She had cancer and had no chemo, came out of the hospital in a very short period of time with no cancer. Mm -hmm. And Wayne um, Dwyer, he, um, you know, he found her to get her to put her book out. He really endorsed her. So when I started looking at other people and spiritual teachers and people who've healed themselves without taking meds, that's when that journey started too, right? Because they're giving you these ideas like, oh, can I try this? So I was like, I started fasting and when you're on meds, you can't just completely fast. I mean, there were meds that's going to take your body out, your mind, your body and your spirit. And so you got to figure it out. Right. But mm -hmm. when you start to realize, oh, there's some things that I can try. And I mean, again, you are not changing our whole life in one day. Try it. Try five minutes of meditation. You'll be try, surprised. You'll be try, surprised. Try. Uh, yeah, intermittent fasting and see how your mind is more clear when you're not eating and, and, and the messages that you can hear from God when you're not. Huh? Yeah. There's some stuff that I can do and take part in this. So God really gave me, he equipped me with all the tools to heal myself. Yes. But you didn't tell me that. The hospital didn't tell me that. You didn't ask. I'm Jeff. mad at you because you didn't heal me. Don't be mad. Look at you now. It was just a no. Lesson. I'm just saying, like that's that's just you know you you all mad. Why aren't they doing this? I need this medication. I need this check. I need to go in this MRI. Why did when they did those ten MRIs? Why didn't they check my head? Why didn't they? All these things. But wait a minute. There's an alternative. So that's the fun part of it. It's like a research project for yourself to see what works and what doesn't work. And then you develop these protocols and now you're helping other people. That's what it's for. That's why you went through this. So final message that you hope to leave with our audience here tonight and our audience that will hear this in the future. Oh, so my final, my final message tonight in honor of, you know, the 9-11 um, Remembrance Day in honor of Suicide Prevention Month, I would say that you are necessary. No matter if anyone makes you feel like you're not, or they take you for granted, or you take yourself for granted, just know that you are necessary. And when you do not feel like you're necessary for any reason, it may be that you're not walking in your divine calling. 
And once you walk, once you figure that path out and walk in that divine calling, you are going to, it's, it's, you're going to have this armor of God over you. And no matter what anything someone else does or anything that you encounter, you're going to walk out fearless and you're going to know that I am necessary and I'm walking in my calling and there's nothing you can do about it. And you're going to start to feel like lifted. You're going to feel yourself rising up. You're going to feel like, oh, I really have a true purpose. And life will change for you. Your whole life will change in a good way. Miss Harold, please tell everyone where they can find you. Eric, please type up her her uh, website, um, her directions to Santa Monica, and her or anything you want to put up there. What would you like? So people can um, find yeah, you. Yeah, right you can put up um, the Instagram handle because that leads to all the other stuff or LinkedIn. Um, so I'm on LinkedIn um, and I'm on Instagram. Um, I have, I think I'm on most of the platforms, but I'm more active on those. Uh, my website is www.malaysiaharrell.com for the, for the coaching and the speaking. Um, my book is coming out. God has my six. It's going to be so amazing. It's telling my story of, you know, my memoir of overcoming this situation an experience. There's a lot more, ladies and gentlemen. You'll have to get the book. More. There's a lot more. We just, this was one drop of the iceberg. Yeah. And um, blissfullifeconsulting.com for, you know, um, holistic wellness for either your groups or if you have a business and you want it with your team, your employees, you want to help everybody like go to that next level because you know everybody's doing well, but you want to really invest in them and, and bring them to that next level. I'm telling you, once everybody get becomes their true selves, you know, and work towards that, we'll we are powerful forward. together. Yes, powerful. We are. <laughs> We're a powerful woman and 9-11 and powerful men and everyone moving forward to be their best selves. Make mm -hmm. good decisions. We love you. Thank you so much, Melissa Harrell, for being on our show. The Thank Cynthia you. Mannion Show. We'll see you next Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And please share this out and tell people about this wonderful woman who served. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you, Patricia, and everyone who came and everyone who will watch this. God bless you. <laughs> and if you need her, you know where to find her. Yeah, absolutely. And we look forward to the book. Thank you.